Oxygen, urea, sugars. Hi, I'm Taras from the Top Shelf Aquatics Farm. One of the best things about having our facility here in Winter Park, Florida, is that I can look over Garrett's shoulder and whenever we have a rocket launch over at the Cape Canaveral uh, NASA base, we can see the rockets. We have the best view. We've seen rockets from SpaceX. We've seen rockets from the Dragon missions. Rockets from the Dragon missions in particular are fascinating because they have all kinds of research specimens and all kinds of experiments that are going on over at the International Space Station. So today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about what uh, their work and our work uh, has in common, uh, both reef keeping in general and the pursuit uh, towards colonizing space. So, oxygen, urea, sugars, what are those things? Well, they're things that all life will make and things that all life needs, but there are also three major reasons why algae belongs in space. Yes, algae belongs in space. Think of it, those astronauts sitting on the ISS hovering above this little speck suspended in a sunbeam. How much must our little world look like an aquarium to them? And wow, must that make the mind thinking? If we can make life, sustain beauty, create a coral reef out of where otherwise there would just be air, we can create so many more things out in space. And algae is the way to make it work down here and up there. So when it comes to algae, they do the same things on the ISS that uh, they do in your reef tank. They conduct photosynthesis. So what is photosynthesis? It's essentially taking CO2 and making oxygen. Why would astronauts want that? Well, because every time they breathe, they make more of the bad stuff and they take away that precious oxygen. So having specialized reactors allow algae to potentially allow astronauts to filter their own air and breathe. Second thing, urea. All astronauts will have to potty, especially if they're surviving and living and drinking, they're gonna have to potty, they have waste. So what is urea? Essentially when it gets broken down, it's a fancy crystal that vertebrates like you and me make because we you know, don't secrete waste all the time, but it's essentially ammonia in a crystal. And when that gets broken down, what consumes ammonia? Yes, why algae. Algae through photosynthesis can consume ammonia. And what does it turn that ammonia and that CO2 into? Why sugars? It can create sugars, carbs, lipids, proteins, all kinds of the precious essential building blocks of life. Everything that an algae cell is doing successfully inside of one of my cultures here and inside your reef tank, those abilities can be tested to the very extremes out in space where they can be converted into viable biotechnologies which will allow for the future of humanity to expand, persist, and ever more uh, explore the wonders uh, beyond this little aquarium of ours. In 2019, the Dragon Crew mission launched a mission up into space, the ISS, experimenting a German-derived bioreactor, a bioreactor seeded with chlorella, a green microalgae not too dissimilar from our good old friend Tetracelmus chewi back here. Because of chlorella, it's basically a big, robust photosynthetic powerhouse doing everything that uh, algae does uh, here and in our tanks. It can take all that unbreathable air, turn it into oxygen, and it can turn all that byproduct into precious building blocks of life, sugars, and then breaking down the waste products. So one last thing uh, is that when it comes to colonizing new planets altogether, scientists have postulated that there could be genesis drives in a way, uh, uh, missiles that contain algae cells that could be seeded onto a planet such as Mars, which has the building blocks of life, just needs to have those inorga inorganic building blocks reassembled into something more usable. Even more exciting, the potential of algae when we consider the origins of our own world. Think of it in its early days. We talked about it in our oxygen revolution video. This seizing mass of inorganic substances, no order, no nutrients, no potential for life. It was algae, cyanobacteria, which first made all things possible leading up to all forms of life, including ourselves. Perhaps in the future, there may be a potential to construct a new home, a new planet where we have something ridiculous, perhaps a Genesis drive where algae are delivered to a planet such as Mars, which has these inorganic building blocks, a place which has the potential for life but which now, for all intents and purposes, is dead. Perhaps because of all this magic, to take carbon dioxide, turn it to oxygen, to break down waste, and to turn it into precious sugars, fats, and other nutrients, algae can be the key to building a new home in case this one gets screwed up many years from now. So in conclusion, I invite you to consider perhaps that future astronaut 
sitting there on the ISS or wherever else they may be in the future, munching on their microbe bar, their dehydrated algae bar, and whizzing into their bioreactor. I encourage that perhaps the feeling that they may have when looking back at this little aquarium hovering out there in space, there are a lot of lessons. Lessons that you and I glean every single day from watching our aquariums and purposely tending to our aquariums and building something beautiful from nothing. These are the lessons that may allow humanity to transcend and explore ever greater things into the heavens and above. Thank you, we'll see you next time.